The Knowledge Buffet, brought to you by the Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center. Today, we welcome one of our top mentors for scaling your business, Chris Adams. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Virginia. It's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to answering uh, all your questions. To start things off, can you tell me some of the pitfalls of scaling too soon as a startup? Yeah, assuming what your client really wants. Uh, as a mentor, I would ask you, how many phone calls and interviews have you had with clients? And, and I want to see 10, 20 actual real good conversations. And from there, you'll understand what your sales and marketing should be like. What are the three steps that your startup should avoid? This one is about branding, you know, being more agile and being more open, get something out is better than waiting uh, six months to get it perfect. Uh, this would be also spending too much money at a beginning sort of showmanship on a kickoff to uh, the launch party. Those are the types of things that I'd want you to avoid. Could you give me five qualities that founders should exhibit when raising equity? Yeah, fire and passion. Uh, my kind of crazy, you got to be a little bit crazy. Humility, you got to be able to take some advice and some constructive criticism. You got to have resilience. Uh, and you're going to see ups and downs. And then one of the biggest things for the angel network would be uh, understanding that if there is a problem, what are, you know, two or three solutions and having the confidence to go with one of them. How can you understand the customer journey and match that content to your business's journey? Absolutely. So truly look at how the client is going to utilize your product and service and start to write blogs or stories around, first of all, getting them to be attracted to buying in the first place. And then secondly, once they buy, it hasn't stopped yet. You have to get them to implement it and use it. And you don't want them to stop using it. And if you did it really well, they will start to recommend your product and service to other people. What are some early round legal considerations that startups should know? Number one is just trademarks and your company name and getting the, uh, your company incorporated in a proper way. And you have to kind of realize that even though we're in Canada, you're probably gonna be selling at some point in, in the United States. So getting some of those initial legal things done is a must in my opinion, because there's no sense spending money on branding and marketing and then having to redo that all over again. How do you create a rejection proof deck for angel investors? Be powerful at the beginning with the why statement. Why is this really matter in the world today? And what's really happening out there? Like why does something really suck? And how is your how is your product or service going to make it that much better? The ending is important as well, too. So be prepared for questions and have some hidden sort of slides for those questions so that you look really great when they ask you those questions and you already have a slide to back up the answers. Tying into that last question, what kind of deals are angel investors looking for? Uh, you know, they're looking for the team, really. Like it's, are you, you're betting more on, are, do they have the resilience? Do they have the technical knowledge and know-how? Can they go the distance? Are they mature enough? Uh, can they be coached? Those are the types of things. Then they kind of look at okay, what is the problem and what is the solution as the second part. What are the must-haves of product marketing content that you need for your sales funnel? Yeah, in the modern world, we have to have blog posts, first of all, to attract uh, people to listen to you know, what are the products and services that you're offering. Uh, you have to have some sort of larger piece of content, like a white paper or a case study that's backing up uh, those blog posts. And then you have to do a lot of social media to get people to read the blog post, to potentially download the white paper, to potentially want to call you or be engaged with your product or service. So all that in written format, but in 2021 and beyond, we almost have to do almost the exact same extent of that, but in video format too. How can you become more than your product? Well, this is a uh, customer experience in, in my part. And an analogy really is, is just having the exact same customer experience. If I go into Starbucks, I have the same coffee, the jazz is playing, people are smiling at me. And the next day, I want the exact same experience to happen. And for you, you need to have that on your toll-free support number, your how people are interacting with your support online or through email. All of those things matter. Are you selling a vitamin or a painkiller? And why you should be more of a painkiller than a vitamin? It's true. It's absolutely true. The easiest analogy here is uh, if you have a headache, you'll travel to Shoppers Drug Mart and you'll buy some aspirin to solve that problem. 
you probably won't get in the car and go to Shoppers Drug Mart if you're just feeling like, hey, I want some Flintstone vitamins today because I feel like I'm going to, you know, do better. You can probably hold off for a few months uh, before making that decision. So think of that when you're doing your product and service. What is the exact pain point that you're trying to solve? And make sure that you're hitting hard in your marketing around that. Thank you for joining us on the Knowledge Buffet today. We are going to take these little snacks a la carte and see you next time. Thank you.